So when we make any modifications to any aspects of our view, um, in order to save those changes, uh, we always must hit the Update Save View Settings button. Otherwise, those, those views will, will not be saved. So in order to do that, in our, in our Save View dialog box, uh, we have um, the Update Save View Settings dialog, and uh, we can apply these changes to this particular view. What you'll notice here is you have the Update Camera Position. If it's just other settings that you are that you are setting, it's an idea to have this off. We don't need to store the, the camera zoom in, zoom out position. In order to save this, we can double or single click on the screen. And you know, just to check that they've been stored, we can evoke another view. You can see we have some differences there in the other view. And then go back to the original one. The original one, you can see those those changes have been saved. Save views and the Save View dialog box act like a list of all the views in your projects and subsequent link to the drawing models they reference to. For those familiar with the older Drawing Extraction Manager and Group Models, Save Views work in this way because they store many different things. And on the left here, you can see a list of items that Save Views actually store. Things like levels, and their level state on or off, you know, where the clipping planes live and which reference files are turned on or off. All the attributes within the View Attributes dialog box also are stored in the Save Views as well. You can access the Save View properties via the Properties dialog box. And you can see in the Save View dialog box there, you have the Information button, which, which evokes the Properties dialog. So let's take a look at Save Views in Action, Drawing Production tab, and we can open our Save View dialog box. And you can see a, a list of Save Views here. So we'll take a look at uh, Plan 01 and Plan, both, um, both looking at the model in Plan. And let's just pop in our camera position here. So we're, we're rotating to a top view. And we have plan and plan 01 at this point. We're in the top view, so I may um, prevent the movement of the camera between each view. So you can see the differences between plan 01 and plan 02. You'll also notice here we have various options here in terms of enabling everything in the view attributes, all the clip volume, models, levels, and reference settings. If we look at plan, if we look at plan, what we might like to do is go to our reference file dialog box. And turn on a piping model. So the piping model can be viewed underneath. So therefore we'll, we'll store that by doing the update view settings. And if we move to plan 01, it doesn't have that uh, reference file turned on. And you can see because we have the reference settings box enabled, it takes on those reference settings. If we move back to plan, you can see that that reference file is turned on. So from within the Save View dialog box, what we could do is look at the properties of the Save View. So we can select plan and hit the Edit Save View Properties. So they save you properties will then appear in the dialog box uh, over here. It shows the, the view and subsequent reference links. It also shows you clip volume settings. So for example, we may choose to change the display style to forward show hidden edges. Or we could turn off the forward display altogether. We could even amend our building rules through here. So from within here, we could change some of our structural rules. Or 
we could come down to our building general here and turn on the generate annotation widget, which is new for update nine. Now any changes we make in here don't need to be applied back to the save view by using the update save view settings. They are already applied by editing the properties. So what that means then is once we evoke the plan and reset it, those changes will be visible. And you can see now we turned off anything in the forward, so we're only looking at cut information. So what we might do is go back and turn on our forward display because that's making up the most of the bulk of our drawings. And we'll put the display style back to forward. And again, we can evoke the plan. And we can see what we did before. Now you'll notice that we evoke the generate annotation widgets. So those movable annotation widgets are not viewable in the 3D view. So let's go to our drawing model and see what we can do with those annotation widgets. Okay, so first thing we need to do is come up to our uh, reference presentation settings and update from save view. And then from here, we may just do a little modification to uh, reduce that text size. Uh, we'll just change the, um, the scale of uh, the annotations. We'll just turn those from 1 to 100 to 1 to 50. And we can just show how those widgets will now be movable. So using the uh, move tool, we can just move those um, widgets around like so. And of course, what we might like to do here is make sure everything um, is annotation wise is set to, to, uh, to white on black. So we've got the wireframe display style. Let's have a look at our, our wireframe display style. It's set to visible edges. So we can just make all those visible edges and zero. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.